So there's an application of the chain rule. You know, people, uh, I've, people often wonder where the name chain rule comes from. I was just wondering about that myself. Um, so uh, is, it because, is it because it chains you down? There's a chain. Is it because it chains you down? I th <laughs> I, is it like a chain fence? It's, I think I've decided what it is. It's because by using it, you burst the chains of uh, differentiation, and you can differentiate many more functions using it. So when you want to think of the chain rule, just think of that chain there. It lets you burst free. I want to share the, the most beautiful equation in math with you, okay? So actually, this is literally, if you search Google, the most beautiful equation in math, yeah. you will find it. So this thing, I might need to use a little bit of the board. I'll just write this pi. We already know what pi is, right? There's another number in math, which is called i. This is the square root of minus 1. So it's like how i equal to the square root of minus 1, which you're not allowed to do. There's no way you can multiply two numbers together and get a negative one. Well, there is if you allow what are called complex numbers or imaginary numbers, so that's this i. You can multiply those two together, you can get even more crazy numbers. Not only something that doesn't end, but uh, not even a real number. But there's another number in math also, and that number is called e. And e appears on a lot of these scientific calculators. Uh, e is another number which is just like pi in the sense that it's transcendental, it doesn't stop anywhere, and also there isn't a, there isn't a very nice way to express what it is. So this one goes by 2.71828 and so on. Actually, this number is also quite impressive. It's 1828, 1828, 45, 90, 45, and more digits beyond there. Okay, so a bunch of nice numbers. But this E actually comes also somewhere else in mathematics. Um, even though I told you this doesn't have sent any nice uh, repeating decimal or even terminating decimal, uh, with E, you can get E by saying, suppose I have a box of chocolates with 100 chocolates, and I drop them all on the ground, and I try to put them all back in. This is like these nice chocolates where everything's different, right? Yeah. <laughs> you can ask, like, what's the probability that every chocolate went back in the wrong spot? And that probability becomes very close to 1 over E. That's this, and the more chocolates you have, the closer it is to this. Anyway, three crazy numbers. It turns out that if you take E, and raise it to that. Then I can finish the equation with two more numbers. Like the, the most basic numbers in math are one and zero. And this is true. So what, what's going on here is I've just put together three completely ridiculous numbers and they together make negative one. For all of the all of the mess that was here, it has <laughs> all come back in together right here. And uh, this is this is uh, this has a name. It's called Euler's identity. And it, it, it is actually the most beautiful equation in math because it combines all of these different concepts together. I think in mathematics, writing is probably more simple than it is to other fields, and that's because of the nature of the discipline, which is centered on proof. Um, argumentation and perspective, convincing, uh, convincing people and making them understand the central to mathematics. And it's also the difficulty of writing mathematics which makes it very important. And as a result, probably it's the only subject where elegance of the writing is, is, is central to how we see the subject. One of the most famous books in mathematics is called Proofs from the Book. It's one of these concepts from the mathematician Paul Erdős, where he collected proofs and arguments that were so beautiful they would be in God's book. I think the idea of things being able to be in God's book is something peculiar to mathematics. So there's an idea, if you hear a proof then, that is so beautiful, then you'd say it's from the book, and there have been questions of such things. And the reason that's so important is because mathematics is not just about finding out what's true and telling people that it's true. You want to know why it's true, and you need to convince them that it's true, and also why, in retrospect, it's obviously true. So as a result, the greatest mathematicians have tended to be, although not always, the greatest writers. And what absolutely is true is that really terrible writers have really hurt themselves as mathematicians. If you have a fantastic idea and no one understands you, it doesn't count. Uh, if you have a fantastic idea and you don't get across why it's so beautiful, it doesn't count. So writing mathematics is, is, is central for that reason. And it's central for a second, somewhat surprising reason. Because once you have an idea, you have to write it down. And when you write it down, clearly, concisely, and convincingly, that's when you find out 
where the flaws in your thinking actually are. It's in the revision, revision, revision process that really you actually learn some of the most important mathematics. When you find a gap in your argument and you realize that that is where the heart really is and that takes you back to days or weeks of further thinking, that's where the real mathematics happens.